Look at this. This front bumper is so heavy. <laughs> it's literally like a three-man job here. <laughs> it really is. It's got all the steel. Oh, it. yeah. All the reinforcements are yeah. built into this. Thing. Side lined up picker. I you need to come out a little bit, come I think. Out, come out a little bit, I so can. I can get the side in more. There we go. Yeah. Oh, are there shims in that too? Yeah, <laughs> dude. Why is everything on a Ferrari shimmed? <laughs> okay. Getting this thing back together, it looks obviously a million times better in black versus merman seafoam. Got the rear bumper back on. Or I should say what's left of the rear bumper. It's cut in half. Now we're trying to deal with wheels. I do like the wheels, they're cool, but they just don't, they, they don't change the car enough. So Mike's had these wheels from Enki and we're trying to order some either like this, these ones or something similar. <clears throat> but of course we're going with like a, like a JDM type market wheel. So it's like overnights from overnight parts from Japan, but it's not working out to be overnight at the moment. Yeah. Interior is still sick. Can't wait to get this thing back on the road. Mike's got some uh, parts from Sparco for the race car. So I'm just kind of hanging out until we can get on to continuing uh, main channel store like vlog. This is kind of bouncing back and forth is what we do. Dave's gone home for the week to be with his kids and I'm trying to finish the month strong, make some extra videos. By the way, I know there was a lot of interest in uh, Mike's cars that he has for sale. So <clears throat> don't be a tire kicker, but if you're genuinely interested in either of his cars, uh, there are other pro cars in the back there. Make sure you guys hit us up or drop a comment and we'll get it over to Mike because uh, these are beautiful vehicles and very, very well engineered and basically good to go to have a ton of fun. So I wish they were more on brand for us in the exotic department because we would just inherit those and buy them and do some crazy stuff with them. But you guys know we're not a Euro Beamer yeah. channel. Come back together. We're also talking about probably freshening up the look of this engine and pull, pulling everything off and re-powder coating all of this a nice bright vibrant red. So when you lift this hood up, it looks nice and beautiful under here. Mike had a few little fun ideas like changing the air filters here, which would give it a throatier sound. You'd hear it more from the exterior of the car. <clears throat> so many projects right now it's cool it's like the process is fun but I, I i do love seeing the car when it's completed and getting in it and just ripping it that by the way stay tuned that has its own little project that we're doing on the van we're finally going to execute some ideas that we had for the career van gt so the cgt is getting a few upgrades power upgrades and aero and design upgrades. So it's gonna look crazy. We we'll probably need to fix this front end a little bit. I have been thrashing this car. Dave's been thrashing this car. And uh, this was a perfectly good minivan when we bought it. <clears throat> okay, it's been smashed. The lights are like all falling out of the bottom of the grill. <clears throat> He's a little TLC. This hood is beyond, beyond warped at the moment, but we'll bring it back to life. When did this happen? <laughs> Holy crap. Dude. Look at the wheel. When somebody, did somebody curb that thing pretty hard? <laughs> when did that happen? Oh, that wasn't me. Dave? Dave, you <laughs> son of a bitch. What'd you drive into? Holy or maybe that was me. <laughs> I don't know. So the 550 has some larger louvers in the hood that Mike made. So we had these ones, right? The, the carbon ones that we got from eBay. 
We need to do something with them. We can't just let them sit around. Like, can't waste carbon fiber. That would be a shame. So I was thinking, Yeah. Yeah, we got you. Oh, it comes out? Yeah, it looks like it's just uh, held in by people. What did you guys do? Ex explain to the stories, guys. Okay, so... I don't know why I called you the stories, guys, <laughs> stories, but guys. this is the stories channel. So after two hours of scraping lots and lots of little bits of silicone out here, basically this whole lens is glued into this channel. It's like a U-channel, and the lens fits in to that U-channel, and it's all siliconed in place. We can only get to the front side to scrape it out. So we're sitting here with little picks and scrapers, getting all that glue out of there and then prying carefully because we don't want to break this or the lens to get it to pull up and lift up enough so we can get this pick in there to start cutting the inside, get it up high enough. And then the silicone will start to tear once we get it open enough. So almost two hours on this one headlight to get it apart. And now we got to clean all the silicone out of here. So when we, after we paint this and put it back together, all that'll be clean and ready so we can put new silicone in there and glue it back together. I would have just bought you guys black headlights. <laughs> I was asking Mike about his trophies and we were just chatting about, I'll show you the other one, the, the championship trophy for FD, but this is cool because he was showing me, we were talking about uh, Gumball. I just came back from the Middle East and you were saying you were there over 10 years ago Yeah, uh, with Ken and a bunch of other guys. So this, this one was actually from... Irwindale, so Jim Connor this Grid. Jim Connor Grid. Yep, 2010, I think. That's crazy. And, uh, and what yeah, are you? You're the burnout 4th. champ. Burnout champ. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> and then the this this one's the that one, the big silver one. That's the Formula Drift Championship, championship trophy. And then all, all the other ones are, are what podium like um, first, second, third place, or second or third place of yeah. FD. And a couple first place. Yep. In really? Well, that's cool. Man, you got lots of those. Quite and are they carbon? Yeah, they're carbon. That's yeah. pretty neat. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. So we're talking about uh, the 550 dash. And we're going to obviously get the dash redone. We're thinking like just black Alcantara. And we got to do door panels. But now with a cage, the stock door panel can't go down. Because the cage, like the bottom part of the cage is there. So he's got to like cut the door panel in half and then add a lower section that's really thin to go past the cage. And we're just talking about how to fill that hole. There's a big hole in front of the passenger, passenger side, where the airbag was. And I was like, can you take the cover off? And this thing is like riveted to shit onto the airbag. And this panel is like, it's this thin rubber, so it's so flimsy. So if we did take it off of here, then we'd have to find a way to kind of hold all of that and support it. Yeah. So obviously we're gonna peel this off, but you can see it's just like this plastic that's all it is. Right? Cover. Yep. So we might just get this recovered. Yeah. And maybe I can pull the guts out of the airbag and just use the brackets so that way this is held in place and it looks decent. But trying to fill this on the dash, I was thinking of how I can make something out of fiberglass and then fiberglass it into the dash, but I don't know if that's gonna work. So and it's gonna take a lot of time. So this might be the way to do it. Hmm. Yeah. Holy shit. It's heavy. It is not because race car. <laughs> this is like 15 pounds. What if we just cut those brackets I don't like that look dangerous for your knees and then didn't fill it in? And it just looks like a knee hole. I mean, we could do that. I don't I, really I, give a shit that much about this car. Yeah. Like, I appreciate that you want to go that far, but like, if the dash has this weird loopy thing... I'll just say it's for people who are tall, have tall, tall legs. It's leg room. It's like uh, yeah. first class, right? Yeah, it's, it's first class. It's, that's it. It's first class. <laughs> Eric, fuck off with that stuff. Stop feeding us. I'm trying to get skinny and look, my, I'm doing a good job. And then Eric comes around with the crack. Mm. You're like a drug dealer for fat people. So good. And Mike's working on the airbag already. He's making quick work of this. It does make me nervous that he's drilling an airbag. He built like, I don't know. 30. You set one off? Yeah, outside. How? Power ground on a jumper pack Okay. onto the uh, inputs. Yeah. So we, we put like, you know, 20 feet of wire. We set it outside in the middle of the parking lot and we turned it upside down. Oh, you did it on purpose? Oh yeah, just for fun. Because we had so many of them. <laughs> my kind of guy. The thing went like higher than the roof of this building. And that's, yeah. I don't know, 20 feet? Oh yeah, like, at least. It, it was loud. I can't imagine like inside of a car. Have you never that. been in an accident with airbags? 
I have. I was half asleep. I love Somebody actually. Hold on. I love how I say that. Like, <laughs> like I'm shocked. Like, hold on. You haven't been in an accident. So you, you know, have, but you're asleep. Race car accidents. Oh, a yeah. few times. Way but different. But in a car, I've been in. I personally have crashed one time when I was 16. Mm. That's it. And we were, so we were driving. Somebody else was driving my truck. We were in Oregon. There was this semi truck um, full of avocados that overturned. Blocked the entire freeway, really? middle of the night. We're going over this crest. We start coming down the hill. It's like a blind corner. Traffic's just stopped in front of us. So my buddy who's driving the truck gets on the brakes, tries to get over and get over and get over into the like shoulder. And there's a guy in a pickup truck. These guys are looking back at us. And the guy pulled over right in front of us and hits the brakes. And he's got another 100 feet of lane. Boom, slamming in the back of him. Oh, Airbags go off my truck. We're, we've got a 48-foot gooseneck trailer behind us. Oh, no. Yeah. Loaded? Loaded. Oh. Two cars. Already, we're going to FD yeah. in Seattle. And my wife's in the back seat with me. She's pregnant at the time. We didn't oh. even know it yet. Oh, no. Yeah. And uh, wrecked the front of the truck. Bent up the gooseneck on the trailer. All this stuff. But, yeah, that was one of those things. Boom, all the airbags go off. It's all, like, smoky inside there. Yeah, that like, haze. Dazed. Yeah. That was yeah. wild. I've had a whole bunch go off. I've crashed a lot of shit. <laughs> I, I think in, when I was 16, I think just that year alone, I, I crashed three cars. <laughs> uh, I learned now. All right, so I could make this strip and grab a piece of metal, measure it, grab like, you know, some one inch wide, um, eighth inch thick kind of strap material. Okay. But it's off a little bit, and I like to be a little more complex than that. So we're going to make this. We're going to draw it up in SolidWorks. And then have a plasma cutter cut this out for me, and hopefully we'll get all these holes in the right place, and it'll just drop in. You lazy son of yeah, a bitch. So basically I'll measure the spacing of these holes, mm -hmm. and then I can draw it all up, and then the plasma cutter will cut all those holes to the right size, and it'll be so done. So this program is called SolidWorks? SolidWorks, yep. And how long has this program been around for? Uh, I don't know. So How long have you been using it? How's that? In about five years. Oh. So right now I'm just gonna draw a line with the two holes, right? These are the two end holes and everything I measured was off of these holes. Okay. So we'll get those dimensioned and then we measured this from center to center is 290 millimeters. So just throw a couple holes up there. We'll do a dimension, center hole, center hole, and 290 millimeters. Now that's dimensioned. And I'll go in and put the size of the holes. These are five mil holes. Yep. Crazy. So then I'll say that this hole, actually we'll make them uh, both equal. So they both change at the same time. And then we'll tell that that's a, we'll do like a 5.2 millimeter. Those so cool. Mentioned. And this is how you built that, that new big louver for the hood of the 550. Yeah, and all the diffuser stuff and... The f what what are you doing? Is missing in my office over what here? What are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm admiring the trophy. <laughs> you look like a thief. You look like you're stealing the trophies. Wait, wait, wait. You can't steal them, Eric. They have his name on them. No. Don't they? They, they do, right? Or do they not? I don't, I don't think they do, actually, because uh -huh. they give you the trophies. Dude, after hey, hey, hey. So. Take all the trophies you want. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> So now you just assign the diameter of the hole in yeah. this like little drop down window? Yeah, exactly. So I'm, now I'm gonna put the spacing for the other holes. So this hole, so they're big, but it's easier to draw a bigger hole and just click them all. Cause once they're small, it's hard to, you know, get to the edge of the drawing okay. and click it. So you just throw them up there, whatever size, it doesn't matter. And we'll do our spacing. So that spacing is 40 millimeters. That moves that over. Crazy. And then we'll do the next one. From here to here. Are you impressed yet? You don't know how to use this? I'm still baffled by the fact that you're like just clicking away. And then look at all the how the menus keep changing on the left. Obviously found your way around all this. Yeah, the flat pattern stuff is pretty easy. It's when you start doing like the 3D stuff or the sheet metal that's all bent and how everything comes together. That's where it gets a lot more complex. So this can do all that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, it is a very powerful program. It's pretty impressive. And... I'm only scratching the surface doing this kind of stuff, but there's some guys that, I mean, they'll draw, they'll draw like whole working 3D models of suspension moving up and down and 
the, they can draw a whole gearbox and show how everything works inside of it. Inside of SolidWorks. In this. In SolidWorks. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I got all the so hold on. dimensions drawn up. All you did was you drew the ruler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like the bloody there. ruler. Let's see if this. I mean, it looks right. That's cool. Mm. So that looks good. Now we'll turn it into a part. Turn it into a part. Oh, damn. And now we can, you know, if this was a more complex part, we could look at it at different angles and see, you know, what it looks like. In what? Whoa. All of these different angles. Wow. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's such a cool program. Oh, that's... Oh, yeah. You did make a ruler. It was, it's not... Here, it it's coming on now. But then it, it like, powers up and does yeah. some... When's the last time you used it? Doesn't sound good. <laughs> to get the louvers for the Ferrari. So it was like... Last week? Last week. Yeah. It's not happy. There's some kind of error going on there. And I don't... Or like speak. a minute. All of a sudden, Eric... He's got his fingers deep in the motherboard, pulling batteries, fingering Mike's friend's computer. It's not even Mike's computer, you know that, right? It's his friend's? Yeah. Oh, fuck, I'm out of <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure out why this thing's not working. Because we hyped this whole video up on this table. Yep. And how much quicker it is. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. Could have got a couple of rulers, drew a couple of holes with a Sharpie, drilled those holes out, Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, that's true. Hard drive. Eric, you son of a bitch. VGA. Look at this. Oh, now what's it doing? Look at this. It's probably just going through systems checks. Okay, all right. Boom. Okay, maybe we can cut these parts out. Yay. All right. All what right. the I hell? I don't know what he did. Dude, what did he do? <laughs> so I actually know how to use this system. Is it this one, right? CNC? No. Okay. <laughs> hey, you following all this? I'm trying to avoid looking at it. That's what my point <laughs> is. Just like, you just like won't look at anything. Well, I want to look at it. I want to see how it's... Just I'm look, having a hard time. Just look right at it. So what's the current challenge, we think? I think it's a grounding issue now. So What's wrong with this thing? Yeah, look at how fuzzy <laughs> that guy is. Eric and I jumped. We didn't even know it was starting. Holy shit, that's good shit on me. He's like, did you know Instagram and Facebook are charging for a verified check mark? And all of a sudden, <laughs> just like, after um, like 20 minutes or 30 minutes of trying to get this thing to work. Okay, here, watch. Want to run to Staples with me? We'll grab a couple of rulers. I'll have the, <laughs> these two parts banged up in like no time. <laughs> we can just drill the hole. Oh, we just drill it. And we yeah. don't have to measure it because it's got That's measure. what I'm saying. It's got the numbers on it, right? You just get the one without the, without the, what's it called? Cork on the back. Oh, yeah. It's angry again. Yeah. So then what was the other issue? So inside of the plasma, it has a sensor to tell how much air pressure is coming into it for aluminum we usually run nitrogen because it makes a cleaner cut but we just ran out of nitrogen so the pressure dropped in the middle of the cut so it stopped and we plugged the air hose in as soon as we did that it started trying to i can't wait to get one of these tables mike <laughs> <laughs> it's so convenient <laughs> want to see something cool this is funny because I was just asking Mike if this has ever ha happened before. And he's like, Tim said like one time, but nowhere near this extent of like just not working. So out of all the years he's been running this thing, all the parts he's cut and made, all these weird dildo looking shapes that he's <laughs> cut out of here. The one time he comes to me, the YouTuber guy, and is like, hey, you want to film something cool? Is the one day everything goes wrong. Computer doesn't work. 
the Eric fixes it. All of a sudden, like, the nitrogen runs out. The tip's running out of its sticky stuff that comes out the end. Like, everything's <laughs> not working. We even switched from aluminum to steel just because he thought it would cut cleaner and not plug the tip of the tip. That's yep, probably that's very official. Term. That's, that's very, technical term. That's technical. <laughs> Sorry, your plasma table didn't work. Really? I bet you'll never guess what's in here. What's inside? Fuel jug. For which car? The race car. Oh. Because race car, Eric. <laughs> now because you, race car. Now you have properly fuel the car. That's right. And Mike told us how you actually check for fuel in a race car. Do you know how? How? Like it, it doesn't do have any gauges. I it has no gauge. So you you want me to guess? Yeah, guess how you check. You you open it up and then put a lighter and then if if it has flames and then it have gas in it. No. No. They suck all the fuel out, measure how much fuel was in the tank, <laughs> then put the fuel back in and top it up based on the size of the tank. Because in a race car, you only put the right amount of fuel based on the amount of laps you want to do because you don't want to put any extra oh, weight in the yeah. car. So it's all by measurement and by scale, like by weight. Okay, so... So there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing. They suck it all out. They measure it in the jugs, how much came out. Mm -hmm. And then they just calculate, right, minus, minus that from the size of the tank or however much they want to put in. And then they retop it up. But That's a lot of work. How are you going to suck it up now on, on your car? Back at the HQ, ladies, I got a little something, something for you, sexy girl. Why you always got the crack out? You have a problem. You have a problem, sir. Ta-da, another piece of the puzzle. And since we're getting real organized here at the HQ, mm -hmm. check this out. I'll be quite proud. Oh, jeez, oh, scared the hell Woo! out of me. Woo! We have a list of cars on the whiteboard and things to do with them. And we have the Super Trafail Evo 2 by wheel nut. Check, coming from Lamborghini on this date. Buy fuel jug, didn't have to buy it. Thank you, Mike Essa, got it for free. Well, you might bill me for it. <laughs> Ta-da, I love that. That's just so satisfying, like you accomplished something. Mm -hmm. That's what I came with, fuel jug. There you go. Eight. Eric, don't break the silence. We had a really good thing going there. <laughs> oh, the hood's really soft. It's really soft there. Was it me? What up, what up? So Marky Mark and I are at the HQ. Mark's gonna open up the door so that I can park the SVJ inside. There he goes. Because race car in the back there. Um, I'm gonna take the minivan to the hotel because I'm taking the race car wheels and I'm gonna take them to AL13 and they're gonna hook me up and help me get them re-powder coated in a different color. That would have been bad. I was almost on the wrong angle and I would have drove the SVJ into the corner of the building right there. I almost like would have crushed my whole side of my car. Where am I going? I'm all over the place. Is it warm enough for some flames? Oh dude, our neighbor will kill us. That's true. Like, <laughs> like, Kill us. Good thinking. I already, <laughs> yeah, no. Is it warm? It is. Is it warm enough for some flames? Unfortunately, the shop area we're in, even though this is industrial, there's residential like right across the main street. And um, back in the day, we already got in a little bit of trouble from some of the residents, and one of them came over. And I gave my number to this person and said, hey, call me if you ever have, you know, an issue. Thinking, we're going to be good boys. We're not going to have an issue. And I get text messages all the time. 
And it's crazy because a lot of the stuff I get text messages about, some of it's us, but like the other day, I kind of had it out with this person because I was like, hey, look, you're accusing me of something I didn't do. Then you're like saying I'm a liar. And it's like the car you thought that was mine that ripped down the street and then pulled in here isn't my car. And I can't police everybody. I can police myself and be accountable for myself. I can't police other people. And I'm not about to even try. Like if somebody wants to drive a supercar and rip down the street and pull in here, I'm not about to go out there and be like, hey man, don't drive down the street like that. Like we drive like dickheads all the time. I'm just gonna be accountable in my specific area for my actions. How sick does that look? Looks sick. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we got the slicks taken off the spares and I'm gonna take these spares over to AL13. I'm gonna get these wheels touched up and completely re uh, color changed, powder coated. So I think I wanna do, I think, what do you think, bronze? Bronzo. I think bronze would be cool. Bronzo. 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 So yeah, now we gotta stick them inside the, uh, so cool. the van. We need to mod the van. We gotta do the van mod. TE 37s. TE 37s on the Canards. van. Canards. Yep. Uh, get the, like the JDM little window, like the air filter thing, you know? What I mean? <laughs> yes. Get those. Um, we could install hood a scoop. A roof scoop. No, well, <laughs> a roof scoop. What if we got a snorkel? Oh my <laughs> god, a snorkel. Oh, we could do. The things Dave would do if the van had a snorkel. Yeah, he would submerge We're too him. close to the beach for Dave yeah, to have a van with a snorkel. Yeah. That's not a good idea. Yeah. Um, He'd go Baywatch with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> It'd get stuck so fast. So fast. <laughs> but hey, man, that thing actually has some power to it. I don't know. Put some sand tires on it. It's got 280 horsepower, and not it's about bad. to have 50 more. Not bad. Check this out, by the way. I always forget that we have the shovel from the road trip that we did. And we made the video series going to um, Colorado for slush meat. And we bought this shovel along the way because I wanted to make a funny skit, which we did out in the desert, of burying the co-pilot, if you guys remember that with Garrett. That's the shovel from the desert. Just hangs there in the corner. Little Easter egg in the DDHQ. There's lots of Easter eggs in here. Yeah, like, got the windshield up there. The windshield's up here, yeah. The 550 first drive as a drift, kind of like racy drift car with the handbrake. Destroy these tires. These are cool. But you don't want to touch these. These steel little, no. like these. Yeah, they actually those poke. Will, yeah, they will poke into your hand and they hurt like a mofo. We have a uh, permanent uh, Steve's car cameo. Yes. Because Steve we've now up his car. Yeah, we've also covered it up with a black car cover, so... No more don't free have to... promo for Steve. Well, the other thing is no free promo, <laughs> but, like, everybody thought that was my yellow Mercy. Really? Which is super offensive, because oh, that's, that's a first Gen E gear. It's, like, yeah, the worst yeah, Mercy you can so buy. A, <laughs> we have... All jokes aside... That's what you can do when you're with your friends and your friends all achieve a certain level of success and everybody has supercars. Steve the, has a plane. The, yeah, he has a plane. He, has a plane. The only, <laughs> he also okay. has another Lambo. The only thing you can do is bug your friends about whatever lesser car they have and make fun of it. Um, <laughs> the white wheels from the SVJ when the SVJ had the black and gray camel wrap, which I really like that wrap, by the way. I was a fan of that. Oh yeah, we have the... The other super trofeo yeah. kind of Easter egg, which was funny because not knowing I was going to buy a race car, I bought this off of Eric Carbontastic. Really? I bought this because he was like, hey, I don't know if you have any use for this, but there's a crashed uh, super trofeo here in China. And uh, do you want any parts off of it? And I was yeah. like, I'll take the steering wheel just yeah. so if I could like modify it and put it in a street Huracan, I would. And then I was like, nah, it's got no airbag. Like, <laughs> It's really dangerous. Yeah. So then I thought, we'll just put it in a frame somewhere because yeah. it would just look cool on the wall. Like it's art. It's yeah. carbon. It's cool. It's got all the buttons. It's real. And it's been super used. Like if you look oh, at the Alcantara, yeah. it's so. Dude, and bad. it's still in better condition than the one in my race. No. Yeah. Really? Go. Look. Okay. So look at this. Feel that. Right. Right. Here we go. We can we can compare the two. Okay. Let's do. We have the technology. Double hand it. 
Oh. Oh, oh boy. I <laughs> Okay, I guess I'm wrong. So there's the one from the race car. Good night. And there's the one above it. Yeah, the one above it's in better condition. This one's really thrashed. Yeah. You have to be careful with that is. because uh, those break. Apparently. Remember? Yeah, apparently so. So. Went a little too hard. Yeah. Sent it a I could probably too just hard. buy a new one, but I don't need a new one. What I need is the custom one that's round that we're going to make. Round? Yeah, I want a round. Oh, the round. I want a round wheel. Yeah. You looked at me like I was on like I thought you meant bath you were salts make there for a second. These rounders. I don't know what you meant, bro. You on bath salts again, Mark? What's that? <laughs> you on bath salts? Me? It's no. a drug. That'd be fun. It's the drug that the guy in Florida was on that was like allegedly like gnawing on the dude's face. Oh, Anyhow, yeah. we'll move on from that gross conversation. <laughs> I did notice that uh, the four by four weave is not the same as the engine cover, which is the two by two. And I think the reason for that is this is the Evo two kit. And this is the old, I'm pretty sure. This is, this is obviously the original evo upgrade so do you have a preferred look i like the big stuff the uh, four by four yeah it's just a little more like i don't know i don't know what the word is i'm made of carbon yeah carbon because sometimes you see carbon like we had the car that i called the sf90 but was actually an f5 was it no that's what was it something you're, five you're killing me dude you work at this that's the uh, daily that's driven exotic I really like yeah, F5. Shout it's a Hennessy. At least you saved yourself on that. Shout out to Hennessy. What is the model of the Ferrari you were looking at today? You're close. Just change the number. Is it a F8? That was it. Boom. F8. That Mama. had all the blue carbon in it. That was super cool. But from yeah. one step away, you can't tell it's carbon. That's so the only problem. It was a pearl white F8 with metallic blue racing stripes. Yeah. And then on the interior and on the exterior, he had custom blue carbon it's pretty sick. so i'm pretty sure that's like a tailor-made car which yeah. is a special program at ferrari where you basically fly to italy and you hand pick really? every material for your car yeah it's super legit and it's like <laughs> it's the big box yeah it's the big box well i'm gonna go back to my hotel and get a little extra sleep this evening in fact actually i'm gonna go back and probably run on the treadmill and lift some weights due to the fact that i just ate a couple of tacos and i've been eating really clean except for tonight's tacos so anyhow love you guys thanks for watching the stories channel it's always fun always cool to put a little string of like parts of our day together and i find it really funny to show you guys the other side of the camera so to speak yeah because when we have the main camera and we're filming the main vlog i really take a lot of pride and put a lot of energy into making a very entertaining piece of content and that means it has to move in a certain way, flow in a certain way, transition and all that. And, uh, you know, feel kind of like a television show in a way. Yeah, I mean, so, YouTube is the new TV. It really is. Anyhow, so I like uh, being kind of more calm and chill and not having to worry about being perfect about what I say or if my hair is messy or whatever. It's just like, you get me how I am. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ready? Yeah. We've been goofing off with this water bottle and we're like, we need to film this. So Mark's been throwing it to me and the goal is I've been trying to shoot it. Show him over here the angle. Yeah, so it's I'm actually hose. pretty I'm tough. I'm trying to throw this into the garbage can, but that hose is in the way. So you, it's like the perfect angle to the barely to the right of it to get it in, or you have to go high and up and over or bounce it off something. And I've been throwing it like behind my back to add that extra level of flair. So check this out. Stand back, you get the whole shot. You ready? Yeah. You got me? Oh, cause that's how hard it is. Cause that thing blocks it. This guy. <laughs> Whoa, hey, look at you. Oh my goodness. No, it's, oh, it's starting broken. to open. I think it's broken. Hold on. Damn! Oh, it's got water everywhere now. <laughs> okay, one more. I gotta get this. I gotta get it. What's broken on this? Something's broken. Oh! I'm telling you, one more time. It's so, come on. It's gotta be so satisfying to get this in.
Bro. Take Bro. it. Take it. I got it. Bro, first you... try? First try, I got it. There's no way. Well, if I get it first try. There's no way. You have to throw where I was throwing it. You get to throw it behind the back? Yeah, I'll throw it from the back. Okay. All right. That, that, it's like the angle. Hello, guys. And I've gotten so close, like, I've hit it off of here and it almost went in. And one time it bounced right off the rim, which sucked. Alright. Oh, oh, see what I mean though? That thing oh, blocks. Really it blocks you. Yeah, it blocks bad. you. Right? Oh. Come on. Do it behind the behind. Can you get it? Can you get it? Are you taking jacket off? I'm taking my jacket off. I gotta enhance my mobility. Enhance <laughs> my mobility. These are the dumb games we play to keep ourselves entertained sometimes late at the DDHQ. Here we go. Can your boy get it? See? Take another shot. It's, it's like everything there is perfectly blocking. It has to be the perfect, perfect shot. Dude, I'm telling you, it's just almost impossible, but it's like... I want to move the camera. It's one of those dude... It's, yeah. it's one of those dude perfect shots that you can't move it. No. You can't move it. It's and all... what's changing is the trajectory because we got less and less water. Yeah. Hold on, I got this. I better not run. I'll probably slip on the water. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's just more and more water falling out of this. It's split right open. When it goes empty, we should just grab a Celsius. <laughs> <laughs> It'll explode. All right. all right, your boy got it. Your boy's got it. Oh, come on. It's losing its weight. Like it had a different trajectory when it was heavier. Uh huh, uh huh. Oh! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Hold on, just to prove we didn't fake it. No. Right there. Dude. <laughs> 10 minutes of shenanigans just to get that. <laughs> Dude, perfect to be right. found. Okay, let's, no, let's put these. Let's put, uh, these, uh, let's, put them, let's put them in the van. Uh, 